Isaiah. And it's Isaiah chapter 59, please. The prophecy of Isaiah chapter 59. And as you're finding the place tonight, can I ask you a question? Do you think tonight there's people who are completely without hope? Do you think tonight there's people and they're beyond all hope? I mean beyond all physical hope. And beyond all spirit, you will hope. Do you believe tonight that there are sinners tonight beyond the reach of God? What about the wee drunk man on Uri Street last night staggering out? He could hardly see his finger in front of him. Do you think is that man beyond the reach of God tonight? Are there sinners tonight beyond the reach of God? You know society outside these four walls would tell you tonight that there are people without hope and with no hope. And outside these four walls tonight, there's, there's a society that believes that there's people beyond hope. I wonder tonight what you would believe. Do you believe tonight there's people without hope who are beyond hope? But here's the $60 million question tonight. Do you believe tonight there's people beyond the reach of God? Praise God tonight. There's no sinner beyond the reach of God. This is where my text comes in this evening. And I want you to listen to what my text says tonight. It's Isaiah 59 and it's verse 1. And now listen to what this lovely verse says to us tonight. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot see it, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Now, friends, tonight is not a lovely text for those tonight that seems to be without hope. That text tonight tells me that there's nobody beyond the reach of God. That text teaches me tonight there's no sinner tonight that's completely beyond hope. You know, friend, tonight, that text that text tonight brings within its grasp even the worst and the wickedest of sinners. Nobody tonight, nobody is beyond the reach of God. There's no sinner tonight beyond hope. But you know, tonight there's people in, in Kilkeel, you'd hardly believe this, but there is. There's people in Kilkeel tonight who believe within themselves they're without hope. There's people in this town who feel unwanted. There's people in this town tonight who feel unloved. 
And there's people in this town tonight who feel so empty. And my friend, tonight there's nobody. Praise God, tonight there's nobody beyond the reach of God. No friend this evening. The dying leper in Matthew's gospel chapter 8 thought he was a man that was beyond all hope. Because of his leprosy, he was cast out of the city, and there he was outside the city, left to rot, left to die, and left to perish. But what it was for that leper that day when he had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, if thou wilt, he cried. Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And praise God, the leper that day who thought he had no hope found that there was hope. There was hope when the hand of the Savior touched him. What about the blind beggar in Luke chapter 18? Sitting by the dusty side of the Jericho road, and while the Lord Jesus was passing by, he began to cry out. He was blind and he was a beggar. Man, I'll tell you, if there was ever a man who thought there was no hope, it was this man. But what a moment it was when he found there was hope when Jesus stopped beside him. You know, my dear friend, it's a wonderful moment when Jesus stops beside you. And he commanded the old blind man to come forth. And that day the Savior not only touched him, the Savior saved him. What about the dying thief in Luke chapter 23? Boys, if there ever was a boy who thought there was no hope, it was him that day. The day when he was to meet his death, that dying thief thought there was no hope for him. But on that day in Calvary's hill, he saw there was hope. And he saw that that hope was found in the man in the middle cross. I'll tell you, friend, no sinner tonight is beyond hope. And no sinner tonight is beyond the reach of God. Maybe you're here tonight, friend, and you're not saved. Maybe you're here tonight, and that's what you believe. You believe, ah, oh, there's no hope for me. You believe, ah, oh, well, God could never save me. Listen, my friend, God can save you tonight. And you're not without hope. And tonight God has given me a message that I have called tonight the Savior's hand for sinners. That's why I brought you to my text tonight, Isaiah 59 and verse 1. The Lord's hand is not short that it cannot save. I want, first of all, to speak to you tonight concerning the reality of the Savior's hand. My friend, tonight, you'll place your hand in no greater hand than the hand of my blessed Savior. There's no hand like his tonight. The hand tonight that touched the eyes of the blind and made him see. The hand that touched the sick and made them whole. The hand that took the dead and raised her back to life again. Tonight, my friend, 
My Savior's hand extends his hand to you tonight, not to shake your hand, but to take your hand. And tonight, unsaved friend, my Savior's hand still reaches out to sinners. I want you to know tonight that my Savior's hand is the saving hand. It's the hand that saves tonight. Do you remember in Matthew chapter 18, the disciple Peter started to walk on the water? Do you remember that day? Do you remember when Peter began to walk and everything was going so well? Matthew 14 it is. Do you remember the storm came? The winds began to blow. Do you know what the Bible says about Peter? Peter became afraid. And the moment Peter became afraid, Peter began to sink. And my friend, Peter prayed a prayer that day as he sank. You know what he prayed? He prayed this simple prayer, Lord, save me. And immediately the Savior took him by the hand. You know, that's how you get saved tonight. You don't have to come out with some big, long theological phrases to ask the Lord to save you. Friend, many a man was saved on those three words, Lord, save me. But do you know about Peter that day? The Lord never reached out to Peter that day until Peter called. Peter had to call for the Lord to reach his heart. Now listen, friends, tonight, you have to call if you want the Savior's hand to save you tonight. You have to call. You see, friend, my Savior's hand is a saving hand. But here's the problem. The longer you leave it, the more dangerous it gets. The longer you leave it, the danger it gets. My friend tonight, how many times have you rejected my Savior's heart? How many times tonight has the Lord already revealed to you in your lifetime that His hand is the hand that saves? There's a wee verse of a hymn that we all need to take into account tonight. Do you know what the verse of the hymn says? Life at best is very brief, like the falling of a leaf, like the binding of a sheaf be in time. There's another line to that hymn, and it says this. Death and judgment are coming. And you know, friend, tonight, you're seven days nearer your death than you were when you sat here last week. Did you ever watch the sound of an egg timer? You turn the egg timer round and the sand quickly falls to the lower bubble. Do you know that's the way your life is, do you? And the sands of your time are quickly sinking. Day by day, the wee egg timer bubble of your life is getting less and less and less. And friend, the opportunities for you to reach my blessed Savior, for Him to save you, friend, is getting less and less and less. My friend, tonight, don't you leave it any longer. 
because you just don't know how far down the bubble your life has left. The Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. My dear unsafe friend tonight, now listen to me. You're lost tonight. You're lost. And tonight you're going down to the very flames of hell. Does that not trouble you? Does that not make you afraid tonight? One breath and it's all over. And time and time again, you felt the urge to reach for the Savior's hand to save you, but you kept putting it off. Oh, friend, tonight, don't shun the Savior's hand. His is the hand that saves tonight. The Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. It's the saving hand. And listen to me. No hand of a clergyman can save you. And no hand of a pastor can save you. No hand of a priest can save you. No hand of a pope can save you. Just my blessed Savior's hand can save. His is the saving hand. But I want you to notice tonight, His is the scarred hand. His is the hand tonight with the scar of the old nail print that took place on Calvary's hill. His is the hand tonight that was nailed to that old rugged cross. And I want you to know tonight, friend, those hands of my Savior was crucified and nailed to the cross. Because my friend tonight, he went to that cross to die there for you that you might live. You know, sinner friend, tonight, I would fail my Savior miserably. I would fail him terribly. And I would fail you terribly if I didn't bring you tonight to that old rugged cross on which this Prince of glory died. And on that cross, my dear unsaved friend, it was there where the Son of God loved you and gave himself for you. Because there was no other good enough to pay the price for sin. He only could unlock the gate of heaven to let us in. Friend, heaven begins tonight at the cross. Forgiveness of sin is found at the cross. My friend, this evening, listen to me. It was upon that cross where his blood was shed. It's at that cross where pardon is found. It's at the cross where peace is found. And my friend tonight, he died on that cross for you. Aye, he died that we might be forgiven. And he died to make us good. He died that we might go at last to heaven saved. I saved through his precious blood. I, it's a scarred hand tonight. Many years ago, there was a, an orphan boy who lived with his grandmother. And the grandmother's house caught fire, and the wee lad was, in, was upstairs sleeping. Granny tried desperately, man, she tried desperately to make it to the bedroom, but, but Granny perished in the flames and the smoke. The house at the front was engulfed in flames, and the whole townsfolk came to the house and stood there 
totally feeling hopeless. One man broke free from the, the crowd and began to circle the house and noticed a young boy screaming at the top window. He saw an iron pipe and, and he climbed up the bell iron pipe where he could get in and the crowd stood watching in total amazement as this man risked his own life. And boys, but how they were amazed when he appeared with the young boy clinging, clinging round his neck and down he came. The following week there was a meeting in the town hall to see who would take this wee orphan boy. Many people had gathered, and the chairman of the meeting said, who would like to come and take this wee boy to be their home, to be their own? Farmer was the first man to walk up to the front, and the farmer said, I'll take this young lad because I have much land, and I have a big farm, and this young lad needs plenty of outdoors. Let me take him home. Then another man rose to his feet, and this man was this man was a teacher, and he says, No, no, it'd be better if I would take him home because I have a large library and and I'll give this young fellow and I'll see to it that the wee lad will will have the best education he could receive. Everybody thought he would be the prime candidate. And then another man rose to his feet, and he was the richest man in the town. And he said, no, listen, let, let me take the wee lad home. Let me take him home, because I have all the money in the world, and I can provide for him a farm, and I can provide for him the best, up, the best, uh, the best education there's going. He'll want for nothing. I'm the one that will take him, and the wee boy seemed unmoved. And then, as the meeting was about to close, a stranger quietly arose from the back of the room. He walked slowly up to the front with hands in his pocket. And as he took the hands from his pocket, the crowd gasped at the horror state of the hands of the man that was there. And as he looked, brought his hands down, the wee boy saw his hands. And he looked up into the man's face, and he leapt for joy when the man with the scarred hand says, I'll take him home. Let him live with me. You see, the man with the scarred hand was the man that saved him from the house fire. The wee lad wasn't taken up with farm and education and money. No, no, he wasn't taken up with any of those. He was taken up with the man with the scarred hands, the man that loved him enough to save him. Tell me something tonight, friend. Does the one with the scarred hand not touch you tonight? To know that he gave his life on that cruel cross to save you from the fires of hell. That's the reality tonight of the Savior's hand. The sinner. As I bring this meeting soon to a close, I want you to look at the Savior's hand tonight and tell me this. Does the world mean more to you than His hand? Tell me this. Does your sin tonight mean more to you than His hand? What tonight in your life 
means more than the hand with the nail print that causes you to reject this hand that can save tonight. The reality of the Savior's hand. But I want to finish with the reach of the Savior's hand. I, the reach, because my text says tonight, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. Thank God tonight there's not a sinner low enough in the gutters of sin that my Savior's hand cannot reach. There's no sinner tonight so far away that my Savior's hand cannot reach. When you hear the story of Anne Coyle, it proves to everybody how the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot see. You say to me, who was Anne Coyle? I'll tell you who, who Anne Coyle was. Anne Coyle was a member of the female wing of the Provisional IRA. She served a sentence in Armagh jail when it was there for possession of explosives and gathering intelligence from members of the security forces. While Anne Coyle was in Armagh jail, there was a tract that came into her hand. And this was the title of the tract. The track. His hand were nailed for you. Anne Coyle sat in the cell of Armagh jail and read that tract. And what she read that day spoke to her in the cell of Armagh jail. Anne Coyle came under conviction of sin and through the little prayer that was printed at the bottom of the tract, Anne Coyle, in spite of the danger that she put her life in, that day she trusted the Savior in Armagh jail. She found that day that the Savior's hand not only pardoned her past, but she found that day that His hand protected her for the present. Anne Coyle used to travel about with Sam Workman in the, in the mid-70s to give her testimony of how the Lord saved her in Armagh jail. You would say to me, well, George, Anne Coyle would need to have been saved. I don't need to be saved. I never stooped as low as that woman, Anne Coyle. You mightn't have stooped as low as Anne Coyle, but Anne Coyle, but listen to me, you need to be saved all the same. Because the Bible says we all have sinned and we've come short of the glory of God. And tonight, my friend, this evening, listen to me. In his hand tonight, his hand tonight, you'll find pardon. In his hand tonight, you'll find peace. In his hand tonight, you will find forgiveness. The old song says, Touch the hand that was nailed to the world's cruel tree that has power, yes, so victory can be. And when troubles, troubles assail you, this great hand will never fail you. Reach out and touch the hand of the Lord. His tonight is the hand that saved, and His is the hand that must save. And His tonight is the only hand that can save. And friend, tonight, wouldn't it be awful to perish in your sin? 
and to be lost for all of eternity in the darkness of hell, knowing that you were just within reach of the Savior's hand to save. Let's all bow in prayer, please. Every head bowed, every eye closed. And friend, tonight, listen, these are very, very solemn moments. Tonight, for someone in this meeting, you need to place your hand in his. Maybe you're a backslider tonight. You know, his hand is outstretched for you. And tonight, you need to come and put your hand afresh in his hand. Come back to him. Now, listen, friend. I can say nothing more because the Lord is giving me nothing more to say, only that He calls upon you now to trust Him. And whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved. Will you trust Him tonight? Make the blessed Savior your Savior knowing tonight he'll save you. He makes a wee promise in John 10, 28. I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish and no man shall pluck them out of mine heart. Will you trust him tonight? I pray it you will. And if I can be of any help to any person tonight, I'm only too willing, and Tracy's too willing too, as well, and others, to stay behind to speak to you. Don't go home tonight. Make this your night when you place your hand into the hand of the man from Galilee, the Savior of sinners. Lord, tonight we pray for deciding grace. And Lord, we seek thee just now to draw the sinner to thyself. Yea, Lord, the backslider to thyself. And Lord, we pray that, Lord, thou wilt save, not just for their salvation, Lord, but for thy glory. O Lord, hear our prayer. In our Savior's name we ask it. Amen.